Hi everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Queen Sugar, Season 4, Episode 7 of Several Centuries. That's coming up next. opens up with Nova. She is getting out of the vehicle, being escorted. She gets out, she takes off her jacket. There's an assistant that gets her jacket and she walks up to the door and you see that she's being escorted somewhere special and we don't know where yet. So she meets up with the young lady and we figure out that it is a producer of a talk show that she is about to go on. And as she goes into the building and gets into the green room, the producer says, hey, you know, for the longest time, Time, you thought your genealogy was such and such but we've actually done our own testing and our own research and we want to be able to reveal this on the show only if we have your consent so she tears up and immediately before she can go any further she says I do not consent with this that producer turned around and went to her earbud and said she didn't consent we got to move on to something else okay thank you and that's the end of that. So Nova goes on to the television show and as typical entertainment fashion, she goes on there and just when the host loosens her up and gives her a chance to relax, talking about the book, they reveal her genealogy anyway. So the host says, you know what? For the longest time, you thought that you were the last lineage of your mother and that there are no females that carry this name, but we have found other wives. The host proceeds to tell her your mother had a distant cousin, Martha Lavoisier, and she lives in Louisiana. She's alive and she's able to talk to you. She's not on the show. She says she didn't want to be on the show, but we wanted to let you know that. And, you know, you would think that Nova would be upset, but she seems to be pretty happy about it. And she says, wow, I'm glad that I was wrong. And pretty much she's happy that her mother has a distant cousin that's still alive. They say a picture means a thousand words, and I don't think Miss Martha from that photo looks too jolly. She looks kind of deceptive, and the fact that they had to dig and search for her kind of makes me suspicious as the viewer. Maybe Martha wasn't too friendly. Why would her mother never mention her cousin? I really think that's foreshadowing, and just maybe with this book, Martha may come back with some dirt. We then see Charlie. She meets up with the only female that sits for the St. Thomas Council, and she's meeting with her just to talk with her. And um, she doesn't seem too pleased to speak with Charlie because she reminds her, hey, at one point you were rocking and rolling with the Landry's. You had some shares and you've done business with the Landry's. Why should I work with you? Why should I even trust you? And Charlie says, okay, I understand why you may have that judgment. I get it, but I found them out and they're not exactly what I thought they were and I need you to help me figure out what's going on with this highway. And she tells Charlie, well, find out the source of why they're making this highway and maybe we can work together to figure this whole thing out because I still can't trust you. Ralph Angel, he comes back to his farm only to see Benny getting arrested by the police and he pulls up and he says, hey, what's going on? And he says, hey, we found a couple of bags of meth in his car. We're taking them in. Ralph Angel sees the, the BS and he says, hey, that's, that's crazy. He would do no such thing. And they're like, hey, we're arresting them. That's it. Don't ask any questions. And Ralph Angel says to him, well, I have cameras and I can look back on these cameras and I can show that you guys are doing something that's not right. And the cop says, I'm sure you have cameras, but they're not on all the time and they're not on getting precisely what we're doing. So good luck. Ralph Angel is pissed off, but he says, Benny, hang in there. I got you. We're going to do what we can to get you out. We cut to Nova. She's leaving the television show. She's about to get escorted back to her hotel, and she sees Calvin. Calvin from all the way back to season one, her married lover who she used to mess with. And he says, no, is that you? I'm so happy that it's you. And she can't believe that it's him. And he expresses that he's read her book and he appreciated in the book how she kind of shouted him out as her best lover or her first love or just somebody she's just in love with. And she says, I might have said you were one of my best lovers. I don't know. 
so you can see the tension you can see the sexual tension brewing and of course they still have some feelings for one another she gets into the vehicle and he says hey you know it's nice to see you again and she wants to know well what are you doing in philly and he says well i'm just taking care of some business and also i you know i live in a certain area now after my divorce i'm getting a divorce and i'm in that process and she says she's sorry for that and he says yeah you know it's just the way it goes and that's where i am with my life and he helps her into the vehicle and she says would you like to meet for lunch and of course he agrees and he says, oh, at the same number? Oh, still got the number in your phone? Okay. And she gives a little shake like, go ahead and call me. So then we cut to Vi's prized pies <clears throat> and long title. So we get to Vi's restaurant. She's closing up the shop with an employee. They're wiping everything down. And Vi makes the remark and saying, man, I sure do miss, Ho I miss Hollywood being here. I didn't have to put up with certain foolishness and he would do this and he would do that and you don't know what you got until it's gone and I'm having to do all this by myself and I sure do, you know, miss him doing all of this work. Which I didn't like, cause I'm like, you know, why don't you just say you miss your husband, girl? Not that you miss that you miss him running errands all over the place. Do you miss him because he did your handiwork, or do you miss your husband? So anywho, they clean everything up and they shut it down. And as soon as they leave, a few minutes after, there is somebody that enters the restaurant that all of a sudden starts to vandalize the place. Her and the employee arrive the next morning to come to their restaurant to see it completely vandalized and messed up. And the employee is saying, oh, let's call the police. And also don't forget to call Hollywood so you can tell them what's going on. Vi reaches to get her phone and she proceeds to call Hollywood and something stops her. And she doesn't call him and her employee says, well, Vi, why aren't you calling Hollywood? And she says, you know what? He's visiting his mother. I don't want to disturb him. He's spending time with his, his mother that's getting older. That's quality time. I don't want to mess with him. I've done done with this before. I've dealt with this before, before so I don't want to mess with him. On the other side of town, Darla is at work and it looks like she comes back from a break or from wherever and she goes back to her desk and before she gets to her desk, she sees a hull of people snickering and laughing and looking over their shoulder and when she gets to her desk, she sees Nova's book face down and when she picks up the book, it's actually on her chapter, A Falling Star. So she already knows that they've read the book or read excerpts of the book and they're talking about her and they're making it very plain that they know it's her by laughing at her and looking at her deceptively and she has this look like she's very defeated and sad and I'm starting to get really worried about Darla. So while the family is crashing and burning, Nova and her past flame, Calvin, they're at a restaurant and they're about to eat lunch. And they're sitting and they're talking and she says, oh, are you sure you're able to do this? Because, you know, taking off from lunch in, mil for the, in the middle of the day to talk to me. And he's like, look, I'm not a cop anymore. I don't do that. I own a security business and it's not necessarily security. So maybe we kind of like behave as bodyguards. And the person that you saw me with that wasn't my boss, that was actually a client of mine so they catch up and they tee hee hee ralph angel and his superhero lawyer boo they get benny out of jail and he is not talking he is just in shock he can't believe he got arrested and he won't eat and you know ralph angel said come on man you know you gotta eat something i'm kind of worried about you you know when i was in this situation i wouldn't eat or drink nothing you know you gotta realize everything gonna be okay man you gotta you gotta pull yourself together and benny says you know I, i'm sorry for not speaking or eating but what ha what would have happened if i didn't have y'all so he just lives that reality that wow i would probably still be in jail on false accusations had i not had you guys so he just says thank you for being there thank you for being there so charlie and micah they go to vise prize pass <clears throat> and <laughs> And they go there to check on her and they find out that even though she's been vandalized, unfortunately, she did not have cameras, but she has really good insurance and she seems to be taking this pretty lightly. She doesn't seem distraught or kind of in shock or anything like that. She's really, really calm. And so Charlie asked her, like, are you OK? Because you're taking this very lightly. And Vi says, this has happened to me before. 
And Charlie says, this has happened to you before. You've had something vandalized? And she said, yeah, my ex-husband, he vandalized my home. And I was, I knew how to get back on my feet then. And Charlie says, hey, what is really going on? You know, are you in Hollywood okay? And she says, Hollywood and I are okay. But I feel like I'm pushing this man away. I said that in the last review. said that in the last review. I had that feeling. But she says, you know, my doctor said that, I might have PTSD because I'm suffering trauma from things that happened to me in the past and that's what's going on with me but Hollywood's okay I just feel like I haven't been communicating with him because I need to get my stuff stuff together and it's stuff that I'm dealing with on my own so as she says that Ralph Angel comes to Vise Prize Pies and Dinah that's a long title and he comes there and he sees Charlie and Vi talking and Vi says hey you two go and talk I'll be okay let me do what I do so they go to the side and Charlie says hey Ralph Angel I need you to look at something so Charlie is able to work with somebody that can get footage from a pharmacy that's from across the street that has camera footage that can maybe maybe give them some information about who vandalized Vi's prize pies and Dinah shop so they can find out what's going on. From that footage, they're able to see someone who counsels and works with the Landry's and they recognize their face. Charlie recognizes their face and they're trying to figure out, well, why is he watching Vi's Diner? What's going on? And then two days in a row. And also they find additional footage of the boy that vandalizes Vi's shop and he sees that it's a son of somebody that was collected by ice and they know him right away and they say hey something's got to be done it'll crush his family if we report this to the police maybe let's just go directly to the family Ralph Angel's girlfriend comes back who's the lawyer and she tells him hey I'm gonna tell you now it's people in the office that are saying they really might start investigating your program because of what happened to Benny and I know you're distraught I know you're mad but just understand that we're gonna fight this. And if it's something that you're gonna lose that's meaningful, don't let it just slip away. Don't just get mad and give up. Give them a fight. So they share a past passionate kiss and I'm really liking this lawyer girlfriend because she is coming through. We pan to a scene where Charlie is talking to Joaquin's family, the young boy that they know for a fact that's him and he vandalized, vandalized the place. And she's telling him, hey, we see you on the footage. We see you on the tape. We just want to know why, what's going on? Because the reason why you vandalized the shop isn't making any sense. So he tells Charlie that basically someone approached him about vandalizing and at first they offered $500 and he said no. Then they proceeded to threaten and say, hey, we can do things to your family. And they started naming names. So he knew that they knew who his family was. So he didn't want to take any chances. So he went ahead and vandalized the shop because he was afraid for his mother. He was afraid for his family. So Charlie shows him the picture. And it's a picture of the guy that was taking photos of Vi's shop across the street at the pharmacy. And she says, hey, is this the guy? He says, yes. She says she still doesn't understand why he would approach him to vandalize the shop. And the gentleman says that this is the same guy that owns a particular company. He tells her that this same gentleman was in my community and around my church talking to people, trying to buy land, and he gave him a card called Old World Energy. That was the name of the company, and he believes that this company may be fracking. So Charlie, she takes this information and she goes to the gentleman that is of the Landry family who she's been talking to for the past two seasons and she tells him she says look I know what you're doing and I just want to let you know that we have information on old world energy and she has this folder and she turns it around to show the company logo and he looks like a deer in headlights and he's like look it's not about black and white it's about money and what we're trying to do will give us natural gas and we're trying to get to that land and the Landry's picked a side and you need to pick a side and that's what we're doing. I mean, I hate that you had to find out that way. Charlie gives him that folder. He opens it up and it reads the word thanks in quotes. Pretty much telling him, thank you for confirming this information that I thought and that I'm not assuming and that you're giving me straight facts. So thank you. And by the way, get out of my office. Darla meets with the gentleman she's been dating and I've always had bad feelings about him. But this scene confirmed maybe he is a helpful person. 
because you know two addicts together sometimes that's not a good thing if you've seen the corner the wire any hbo <laughs> any hbo series is based on real crime you know you start to think hey you don't get two two people together that's been down that road but anywho she comes to him and she tells him about what she experienced at work and how people are taunting her about her past and he says look don't let this be the setback. I'm afraid for you. You might need to call your counselor because I know I'm talking to you, but right now you need to go somebody that you can trust and you can go into further detail with. Darla says, look, I'm not weak. I'm just angry. I just wanted to talk to you. So he says, all right, I'm here if you need to talk. Keep your head up. Just be strong and don't let that get to you. Charlie brings Joaquin to Vi's diner and she says hey this is the boy who damaged and vandalized your shop he talks with Vi he tells her look I didn't mean to do it I was just afraid for my family's safety and she says uh, just just stop stop trying to explain yourself I'm angry with you but we gonna do this the old-fashioned way to make this right you're gonna come in here a few times a week and you're gonna clean and you're gonna help me rebuild this place and get it back to where it was until I feel that you paid that off and they made a deal and she kind of gave him that little smile like all right i'm giving you this chance they walk out of her office in the diner and they see people of the community they're helping to clean up and she's just so so happy that people have come to donate their time to help her with her diner and to clean up and charlie says hey these are all volunteers from the community and we pulled together and it's all because of you because people know you so they were more than willing to help we cut back as the family's still going through their mess and we still got Nova at the hotel and she's doing all right. She's doing fine. She has no idea of the tornado that her family <laughs> is in with a whole bunch of mess. So she's at the hotel and she's packing up her suitcase and then you got, you know, her ex-lover coming to the hotel like I don't think we said bye correctly and I still got feelings for you and maybe we can give this another chance and I know this is a new us and maybe we can give a new us another chance. And Nova, she says, hey, I thought about that. I still have some feelings, but I just don't think it'll work out. That was the end of that. whoop de whoop Charlie goes to the area where she's campaigning, and they decide with a lot of volunteers, they are doing a silent protest. They are doing a silent protest because they want to bring awareness to all of the ruckus they've been going to through the threats, all of the things that people are being falsely accused of, their names being damaged, certain things going around the city that are just making them look bad. They're bringing awareness to greedy corporate companies that are running small communities out and just devouring farmland and their small businesses. So they were private protesting. It was a success. After that, Charlie and Micah, they go home and they look, a photo, look at photos people have posted about the protest. They're very happy. And then Charlie says, hey, this is great. We can promote it. But it's just more about the campaign. I really want people to know that this is what the community should be. And we should be stepping up to people such as the Landry's. And right after she says that, her cell phone starts ringing. Then Micah's phone starts ringing. Then the house phone starts ringing. And she's like, hey, you know, hey, people are already calling now. It's probably the news. It's probably people wanting to ask some questions. She answers her cell phone. And she looks like somebody just told her somebody died. And she starts to cry. And she says, what is it? Oh, my God, no. And she gives a little scream. And Michael says, Mom, what's wrong? She hangs up the phone. And she says, the mill is burning. It's on fire. Wow. I can't believe it. The Landry's went as far. Or another enemy that she's made has burned down the mill. I think Nova's gonna come back soon and see this mess that she's made and decide was it worth it. I also think that Hollywood unfortunately has been pushed to his limits. Charlie is in big, big danger and she's making enemies and she doesn't even know where they're coming from. I also think that Ralph Angel's lawyer girlfriend, I can't think of her name, I think that they're gonna start to attack her because she's at the courthouse and there are a lot of whispers there and things that people wanna keep from her because you know the cops work with the judges, the judges work with this person, the lawyers work with this person, the counsel works with this. It's all 
in a bundle and all in a circle and they all work together. When things happen, when you were vandalized, you called the cops and I'm pretty sure those cops reported that to somebody. I'm pretty sure if you called a lawyer, that lawyer will call a judge and then that judge will call somebody. So where is the relief? Where is the relief to everything that's been happening within the family? Because when something tragic happens or they need help, where can they go? What will save this family? Will it be an unfortunate tragedy? Or will it be something where they say, we have to put this book stuff to the side and get over our own personal things? And are we going to have to band together as a family to fight this? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, like, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think. Hit that bell so you don't miss any posts. And also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Talk to you later.